Hey guys, what's up? Tyler here with another Windows 10 video. And in today's video, I'm gonna be doing Windows 10 shortcuts. And so if you've been subscribed to me for a while, you know when Windows 8 got released, I did a Windows 8 shortcuts video. And some of those shortcuts are the same, some are different, some don't even exist anymore. And so let's just dive right on into them. And so we're gonna start with just the Windows key. And so if you press the Windows key, you get the start menu. Before that would take you to uh, the Metro UI, whatever it was called, Modern UI. Now, just takes you to the start menu, very good. Next is Windows key C, and that opens up Cortana, and as you can see, Cortana is listening to me whenever I speak, and she's probably gonna just try to search everything I say, and I really don't want her to do that, so I'm gonna click the X. And so Cortana is the new virtual assistant in Windows 10, and you can program her so that whenever you say, hey Cortana, she shows up and she starts searching for whatever you start saying. So it's very nice and it works pretty much how I like Google now and Siri to work, but hey, this is, that's for a different video. And so next, the Windows key and the tab button. Now that is virtual desktops. Before it used to be different, it, used, it was used to access the modern desktop taskbar, but now it is used to access your virtual desktops. And that's new in Windows 10. It's kind of like how uh, the Mac OS X does it. Uh, but now you can have your own virtual desktops. You can add pretty much as many as you want. Uh, I was kind of hyped for this because I was like, oh my goodness, I can run three instances of Adobe Premiere all in one, all at one time. But uh, it doesn't work like that. So you can see I have Adobe Premiere opened up in desktop one. If I want to go to desktop two uh, and I do open Adobe Premiere again, it throws me back to desktop one. Now it doesn't do that with all programs. It does that with things like the Adobe programs, Office programs, but you can have different instances of things like Google Chrome. So we have Chrome open there. We're gonna to go to desktop three, open Chrome again, it opens up a new instance of it. So it probably depends, you know, what program you're using as to which ones can it be open multiple times or not. And so let's go back to desktop number one. If you hit the alt key and then tab, uh, this does what it's done in previous versions of Windows. You can cycle between the different windows that you actually have open. Uh, so that's not any different. But back to virtual desktops, if you press Windows key, Control, and D, so Windows key, Control, D, it opens up a new virtual desktop. So now I should have a bunch more open. Yeah, I have five virtual desktops open. And so that's a nice feature. Nice, quick, easy. Want to add a new desktop? There you go. Now, Windows key, Control, and F4 will delete a Windows desktop. So now I only have two left. And whenever you're in the tab view, you can see uh, all the different windows that you actually have open, which is nice in case you want to say, okay, where do I have, you know, Twitter open on this, in, on this version of this desktop? So oh, here it is, found it. And so and you also have Windows key, control, and then left or right to switch between your virtual desktop. So you don't have to just use Windows key tab each time. You can just go left and right with your arrow keys. And so that's pretty much all the shortcuts that I found for the virtual desktops. If you have any shortcuts in general that I've missed, feel free to put them down in the comments below and we can help each other out. And so moving on, we have Windows key I, which will open up a settings program. And now this is still, we still have control panel and control panel looks pretty much like control panel has always looked. If I could spell it right, that would be a great start. Control panel, desktop, desktop app, uh, but most all settings are the same. Now, you know, Microsoft's getting a little bit better at putting, you know, everything everywhere. Like this doesn't have two different settings and these have 15,000 other settings. Like for the most part, most settings are in both of these windows. Now, I would like to see them just completely get rid of, you know, maybe either this or this and just have one way to access your settings. But I guess for the sake of Windows 10 and the way it looks, they have two different versions. Um, there are only a couple more like advanced power settings that are hidden within control panel, uh, but most everything you can do through Windows key I through the actual settings program. Now Windows key H is a share shortcut. And to what I understand so far, it all it does is take a screenshot of your screen and then you can mail it. So let's say I wanna mail it, I'll use uh, my T game and tech mail and you know, it adds the shortcut or not the shortcut the screenshot to the email And then I can send it to whoever I want. So I mean, it's a nice feature I don't find myself using it too much, but I mean at least it's there Windows key K is to find devices So if I had any Bluetooth devices available, which I do not have any around me at the moment It would search for wireless display and audio devices 
and then you can find other type of devices. So that is the shortcut in case you wanna add something new like a wireless speaker, a wireless mouse, anything like that. Now Windows Key Q will bring up search. Now it looks like it's just bringing up Cortana, which it kind of is, but it's not the audio, I'm gonna to listen to everything you say version of Cortana. It's just the search version. So I could search for Microsoft Word, and then Word 2016, Word Viewer, all that stuff shows up, kind of how it did in uh, Windows 8 where everything showed up on the right-hand side of the screen. Now it all just shows up in the Start menu. Windows key and P brings up your project display settings, so I can choose a display on just one screen only, duplicate, extend, or second screen only. Other than that, there's nothing here, but this has been you know, standard on Windows computers for a long time, so it's still in Windows 10. Windows key X brings up the tools menu, and you can also access this just by right clicking on the Windows um, start button, it does the same exact thing, but it can bring up your, uh, a lot of the stuff that's in control panel, such as programs and features, but it also has a couple other things such as command prompt, um, disk management, and other just random stuff that you might need. And you can also shut down your computer from this, but you can also shut it down uh, through the power button on the start menu. Windows key print screen, takes a snapshot or screenshot of your screen and it will save it in your pictures folder. So if I bring my pictures folder over, uh, this is something I really like. I really like frequent folders in Windows 10. I'll just say that right now. Um, so <laughs> over in pictures and then in screenshots, don't mind all the random, completely random stuff that I have. And then we have our different screenshots uh, that we have taken and that I've taken so far with that function. Windows key enter launches narrator and Starting it kind of takes settings, them a while to pop up and then he kind of pops up behind everything you have to click on to bring them up settings, and i don't want to hear you narrate my life uh, but it brings up windows narrator if you ever need them windows key e brings up explorer in previous versions it opened up like the my computer uh, but now it opens up the file explorer and then of course you know you can explore your files it's pretty self-explanatory windows key r opens up the run dialog box windows key u Always opens up the ease of access center and why is narrator still narrating you need to stop narrator uh, but this is all of your ease of access settings windows key control and f brings up the find computers dialog box now this is interesting because it opens up but the active directory domain service is currently unavailable so i don't know if this means they're changing it and it'll be available in a later update or they're in the process of removing it all together so the shortcut works but the actual function of the program doesn't. Now these shortcuts were available in Windows 8 as well. It's the Windows key and then the number of whatever program you have on your taskbar, like number one opened up Microsoft Edge, uh, number two is going to open up File Explorer, so on and so forth. If you press Windows key Shift and then two, it'll bring up another instance of that program and Windows key Control and the number will open up the last version of it. So it kind of like jumps back to what you had before the window that you just opened. Windows key Alt and then the number will open up the menu that you get whenever you right click on an icon in the taskbar. And so that's a nice shortcut you have in case you want to jump to one of these things that you visit most often or unpin it from the taskbar, so on and so forth. All Windows key B does is do this, show hidden icons, and then you can click that little arrow um, other than that, it doesn't really do anything. I think it was supposed to do something, but maybe it's just kind of left over from Windows 8. Um, before it was used to select the first uh, item in the notification area, but now all it does is just highlight that and you can hit show hidden icons. Windows key T cycles through all the items and icons on your taskbar and it's going across my second monitor too as I press the buttons, then it comes back to the first monitor. Windows key M minimizes all of your windows. Windows key Shift M restores all your windows. Windows key D shows your desktop. Windows key L will lock your computer. I'm not gonna do that because sometimes it throws bandy cam for a loop and it just has a fit, but just rest assured, <laughs> lock screen shortcut still exists. Whenever you have a window open, if you hit the Windows key and then the up arrow, it'll maximize it. If you hold the Windows key and the down arrow, it'll make it smaller. And then if you hit the down arrow again, it'll minimize it. Windows key home will minimize everything but the window that you actually have open. If you hit Windows key left, it'll move it to the left side of the screen. And then Windows 10 will say, okay, you have all these other ones. What do you want to put over here? So I'll say, you know, I'll put settings over here. Now, if I click on this window again and I hit Windows key up, 
it'll move it to a quarter of the screen and then you can select something else. Now this is new in Windows 10. Windows 8 just had left and right, but now in Windows 10, we can use quarters. And so I think that's really cool and you can just pretty much snap these to really wherever you wanna snap them to. Windows key shift up arrow extends the window completely height wise. And then Windows key shift left and right will move it from the left to the right monitor. You can't see it, it's on my right monitor right now, but it is and I press left or right and it can bring it right back to the first monitor. And then last but not least, Windows key F1 will launch up a Microsoft Edge uh, instance where it says, how do I get help in Windows 10? And so that's pretty much all that does. And so that's all the Windows 10 shortcuts that I have. There might be some that I'm missing. I know there are a few for command prompt, but not a lot of people even care about that because not a lot of people use command prompt on a daily basis. But if you wanna know those shortcuts, I'll link them in the description below. I kinda of picked them from all different websites, but I know one website where the command shortcuts actually exist. Uh, hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, leave a thumbs up. Also subscribe for more Windows 10 and other videos in general from me. Remember to also check me out on all my social links. They're all down in the description below. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Remember to use your Windows 10 shortcuts and we'll see you guys in the next video.